phases in the Imagine IS. Um, we're going to walk through each of the phases. Um, Tony will help you guys with the technical side of things. And then um, I will just provide some input on either the process side, if there is um, some reasoning behind um, some additional things you should be doing, or if we have had some input from like the, um, the audit information or the um, provider compliance. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. We have about 30 people on the line. So we just ask that you um, mute your line. Um, and we'll just stop after each phase. So we're going to get all the way through discovery. And then we'll open it up for questions. And then we'll go through the next one. And then open it up for questions. So everybody will have an opportunity to ask questions. We should have more than enough time with two hours. Um, so I, I think we'll be fine. So I'll, I don't think I should have to move anything. So from your front page, uh, if you're going to uh, advance your discovery, uh, advancing discovery through the phases is done through discovery management. Discovery modules move as a group of all discovery modules at one time. So by opening up the discovery management phase, after you've collected all your information, done your visits through your normal processes, and input it into the correct modules, they'll be in draft, working draft internal. And you would select the next phase. And you'll notice for my SSA, did I get it there? I did not have supervisor settings. If you have supervisor settings on your uh, SSAs, it will stop in a draft uh, working pending review. At that point, your SSA supervisor would need to, first they'd get a notification, then they would need to log in and go to that individual and review the uh, discovery module and click uh, the same button that I did right here to push it to the next phase. And I jumped forward some, so I jumped too far. Oh. So the next phase would, uh, after they review it, would be, uh, is it completed or is it draft distributed? Review complete. The discovery is the only one that has review complete in it, which sends a notification back to the SSA that review has been completed and it's now ready to go to draft distributed. That's the only one. The other phases, once they do the review, it will jump to draft distributed. So that's only with discovery. Uh, after you've gotten your feedback, the next phase would be complete, ready to publish, and you would do it the same way. I'm sorry. So within, no, you're fine. So within draft distributed, and um, as Tony said, he, he hit the button one too many times because we didn't think it went anywhere. But within draft distributed, the team members should be sending that out for feedback. So um, if you have team members who are not using the portal yet, you should be sending that out manually to get feedback. Within Draft Distributed, you would have to print each module separately. Um, you can't print it all together until it's published. So you would have to go into each one and print it in order to be able to send it out for feedback. You want me to show the printing of each module? Okay. 
to print each module, as uh, Debbie said, uh, I would go in into the module because I can't print them as a mass until they've been published. Run the report. And it starts a service called SSRS, which is SQL Report Server Service, uh, to generate this report. It takes a few minutes. And it's not uncommon for it to stall. If it stalls uh, because it's the first time, you may have to shut the window and reopen it. Uh, this is characteristic of, of this tool and uh, how it's set up because it's, it's doing a lot of work in the background. So I know there's been some issues with that, uh, but it does work, and we're doing best to uh, even make it faster. And this is the SSRS report. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it has a print icon here that you can print this. Uh, it is not the recommended, and even in the videos, it put that this is not the recommended way to print. The preferred way for formatting to print is go with the uh, save icon, go to Acrobat PDF, open it up as a PDF file, and print it here. This is going to give you optimal formatting and uh, the best looking document that, uh, to send to the family. Uh, once you've done your print from there, of course, you can close it, close the report, and go to the next one. And each individual module has to be printed in that manner. Uh, after you do the draft and uh, distributed mode and you've got uh, all your feedback. Uh, the next phase is uh, complete, ready to publish. Uh, this means the feedback has been received, and you're scheduling it for the uh, the print service that uh, works behind the scenes. So there's not a whole lot that happens there. It is it is a phase. So Debbie, can uh, any more details on that to add? Um. No. Well, actually, yes, one thing. So we have had some questions about what information is on the front page um, in discovery results. And because the um, discovery information, you can have a published discovery result and then go back in and be working on another draft and get it to ready to publish and have sent it out for feedback, um, gotten that back in, be at this stage. Some people have gone to the front page and thought that on the front page would be the information that they have entered along this way, and it's not. The Only the information that's on the front page is what's been published. So um, the information that you have in draft is not going to be on the front page. Now, are you talking about uh, these quick summaries? Right. So on the quick summaries, this is what's been published. Right. Okay. So if I made changes since this was published, it won't show until this is published again. Right. So I've hit the stage to where I've gathered feedback uh, and I'm ready to publish. And you'll notice that from here you can reset it to draft, uh, to reset the internal working draft, uh, and the next phase button there. There is no next phase beyond that. Uh, it will tell you that it's ready to publish. I'll click the publish button. And then we've, we've had quite a few questions. Well, where's, where's my published at? I published it. It did update the front page. It's 
right here. Discovery history, every time you push it over to publish, it generates a PDF file and saves it in the history from right here. You can't print it from here, but this validates for you that on this date at this time, it took a snapshot of your discovery results. And from the front page, I will print that snapshot. And it only looks at the last snapshot. The other snapshots are saved in your documents folders as PDFs. And you can look through the documents folders for the individual uh, if you'd like. And mine's going to air out because this is a mutated user. But those printed results will be located here in the Documents folder. I'm not going to use a lot of your time, but the folders will come up and you can go to the Discovery, uh, the ISP, and it will uh, be a PDF located in that folder. Again, some of these take quite a bit of time, and the county that uh, I've talked to uh, understand, I hope, what I was talking about. It's looking, using a completely different computer type server, and it's connecting in a different location other than the data that's in Imagine. So it takes a little time for it to connect, go through the electronic transfer and the security process. So uh, that's the reason for the time delay sometimes in some of this. Uh, if it continues to air out and stuff, then definitely it is a uh, support ticket that needs to be submitted. So uh, that's discovery management, uh, and a, hopefully not too fast for anyone. But uh, questions about discovery management, and discovery phases. No. Okay, then we'll move on. They to are all on mute. They're sending you questions through the chat box. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. Where's my chat box? Questions. Questions. Okay. Can we take them off of mute? Uh -huh. How do I? How do I make it bigger? Okay. We're going a little fast. Can you slow down? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat again about how we use documents folder? Uh, Tracy, one, I want to apologize uh, because I didn't didn't see that and catch it in time. So uh, uh, we can definitely go back through the discovery if that works uh, works uh, as we uh, continue forward. Go back through it and uh, Bambi, for you on the discovery uh, the documents folders. Uh, first, let me say this. I'm going to minimize that back. And from the front page, uh, documents. Uh, in, visits, in visits with the counties that we have done, uh, there is some of the counties have different policies and different direction on using the folders as the current structure they are. Uh, that's a policy question, uh, and Debbie, uh, I'll let her step in to answer that. But as far as the folders, every time you do a publish, it creates a PDF file. Uh, that PDF file, how the system is currently set, it will put it here, right here in the ISP folder in the archive for discovery and for your ISP. Your outcomes will go in into the outcomes once they're complete. But again, your county policy and uh, the current directive from the staff here is what you should use as far as accessing or putting anything else in those folders. The discovery is an automatic generated, but 
uh, if you're using for anything else, Debbie, you know, that. Yeah, what Tony is referring to is um, some of the, the SSA directors have had a conversation about whether they are going to scan documents that are coming into your county um, and put them into the folder in their current setup. And I think they are still um, making a decision on that at your individual counties. But as Tony said, um, the discovery results and the plans going into those folders um, automatically, you can, if let's say a provider um, is using the portal and you want to say to them discovery results, um, in totality are in the folder if you want to go take a look at them instead of looking at them um, one by one, if that's an easier view for them, they could do that. They have access to the folders. Um, so it's, it's just a different view. It's a different way of getting to them. Uh, I see there's a question from Jeff. Uh, will I get a notification or alert about feedback uh, for discovery module? When you get not when you get feedback, no, you will not. Now, I don't know whether you're familiar with it. I'm going to minimize this one more time, then I'll come back next question. But the SSAs from your dashboard, you have a view right here. My feedback notes. Okay. My discovery feedback. Feedback from all of your users about discovery will populate here. It will have the individual's name, the person that uh, uh, provided the feedback, and all their feedback right here. So you have a central location that you can see all the feedback. Uh, there's outcome feedback. It's the same way. ISP feedback uh, in addition. So you can change and get a central view of feedback about every plan that you pushed out for draft distributed and uh, the feedback that's provided through the portal. And remember, portal access is based on being an assigned team member and having a web role and web access. So uh, if you're doing hard copy, of course, well, we know you won't. But if you're doing it through the web, and I do see quite a few of you are starting to uh, have uh, web access for your team members. Uh, as they go to draft distributed, they'll get a notice that feedback is requested. Once they open it up and they provide feedback, it'll be here on your dashboard uh, to where you can pull it all together. Within each discovery module, and I will show that to you from find the SSA dashboard, go back to it. If I just want to know about feedback on one module. All feedback for just this module will be logged here. No matter how many times it goes around and you publish it and then you resend it out and publish it again, CRM does a very good thing. It'll keep every bit of that as far as the tracking history, so you will have every bit of the feedback here. So uh, you will have a history of uh, all the feedback that was provided. So, uh, the next question we had was, can you print the complete, completed published plan in PDF, or do you have to print them separately? Now, yeah. plan, plan is ISP. Or uh, talking discovery, so we'll talk discovery at this point. Uh, can you print the completed discovery in a PDF, or do you have to print it separately? No, you can print it. And minimize again. I do see the question about SSRS, and minimize this from the individual's front page. The same thing. Uh, right here, run reports, once they have been published. Now, if you've made changes since you published last time, those changes will not show on this report. Only the items that were 
in the modules at the time you did the publish will show on this report and you do the, the same method. Use Acrobat popping out to a PDF so that it provides a decent format. And it will print off in a very nice format. We have had a couple support tickets which are still open. The team's working on upstairs about a little bit of overlapping tax text and that's, we know what the reason is and we're working on making it better. I'll leave it at that. And uh, the discovery right here, uh, remember my data in here is is all for testing purposes. So a lot of it doesn't make any sense, but uh, we are aware also that uh, on my finance, the module personal money does not print. And that was uh, by asked for. However, that has been changed, so the team is aware of that. And that one slender piece of uh, the discovery module will not be uh, published also. Uh, and that's that's it. I mean, it's a it's a very nice report to uh, to keep in hand. Uh, the question from who was it about? Uh, Joanne. John. John, uh, SSR. It's actually SSRS, and that's an that's an IT acronym for SQL Service Reporting uh, SQL Server Reporting Service. It isn't anything you have to worry about. It's just when you initially click Run the Report and you see the little wheel spinning. That's a completely different IT server in the back, like a big computer that's working in the background, pulling information from all these fields to make the report. Uh, so it's just an IT type uh, term. Don't worry about it. If it, the big thing is, is if it don't open up and you shut it down and open it up again, it still doesn't open up. Put a support ticket in because we got a problem and uh, we'll get it fixed for you. Okay. And for those of you that are trying to take notes, the majority of the information that we're going over is covered in the um, PowerPoint that I sent out that showed all of the phases. Um, so if anybody didn't get that, um, just send me an email and I'll try to get it back out to you so you don't have to write everything down. And we are recording. And we are recording, so you could always go back to this and refer to it later if you need to, or if a staff member couldn't watch it today. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check one more time, make sure we have no other questions about discovery before we continue. Okay. And it looks like we're okay, so moving on to outcomes. From the individual's front page, anything you want to see on outcomes before I start? Uh, outcomes, uh, again, I've created a couple, uh, and, and a couple notes to keep around outcomes. For outcomes on the portal side, support services on outcomes, uh, where is it at? Projected services. These are the people that will get notice that feedback has been asked for when it goes to draft. Okay. So if you have not added projected services, even if it's a non-paid projected service, uh, you know, and selected a provider that has portal access, uh, they won't see anything. So you'll have to mail that out through the mail. Uh, very similar to discovery from the uh, people call this different things. I call it more commands because you have her over it, it says more commands. <laughs> I've heard it called elliptical and everything. You call it what makes sense to you. I'll figure it out or uh, call you. I get your support ticket. That's why I'm trying to help you out as we go along with some of these words, these IT words. We call it the three little dots at the top of the page. Yeah, that works for me. <laughs> so uh, you'll click the next phase. You'll get 
similar messages to what you do in Discovery. It's going to close. And if you have review settings, it will stop and working draft awaiting review. And that's on Debbie's PowerPoint. Uh, and your SSA supervisor will get a notification. They'll have to log in and review your outcome. Uh, that's a process and a procedure thing. Debbie, any more to add to that? Did you set one up for in planning so we can show them how the notification goes back? I got one that I did that so I can show the notification, okay. but I took that off. Okay. We have one that um, we can show you how the supervisor can send the notification back to the SSA. Um, we were getting some questions about um, the supervisor was reviewing all of them, but then was forgetting to tell the SSA that they had done so. So um, we have an easier way that you can just flip the notification around and then send it right back to the SSA. So you don't have to do um, a manual notification or um, make a list outside of what you're doing and send email. Um, so Tony's going to set that up real quick so that he can show that to you. Maybe. 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 Maybe I'm using the wrong one. That's probably the reason. I'm just using a QA one. This is actually Robert's uh, supervisor director, and uh, this isn't a great screen, but uh, here's a notification, uh, and I apologize. I took the review settings off of uh, Robert while I was doing some checking earlier this morning, but uh, Robert's supervisor has uh, done their part. They've looked at the outcome. They've updated it, and he's got this notification setting. Uh, he's put a note in there for Robert that he's updated it. Recipient means who's going to get it. Uh, and what's going to happen here is when I save and close this, I don't want to mark it complete, but I want to do a save and close on the notification. So basically what it is is if you remember in school you made the little footballs and you passed them back and forth, you're passing a note back and forth here. So Robert Supervisor, uh, instead of marking, marking complete, he's put a notice in there that he's completed his action on it. He saves and closes it. It's gone from my list. And if I look at Robert's dashboard, Robert's dashboard has it there that my supervisor completed it. And I can mark it complete and know that it's ready to go to the next, to the next phase. And this is outcomes, so don't forget outcomes. Uh, review completed goes to draft distributed. We had a couple uh, support tickets where uh, that button, like with discovery, I clicked it a couple times, and it'll go from draft distributed to active to complete, and then have to reset the data. So uh, click it once and give the system a chance to work, because depending on your connection speed, it could be an issue. Yeah, with um, outcomes, the 
within draft distributed is also the phase where you want to make sure that you send it out for feedback. So non-portal users, um, you'd have to print it within the outcome section and send it out for feedback. Um, the next phase within outcomes, if you're looking at the list that I sent out to you, is active. We're not going to move this to active right now, and we're going to come back to it later. Um, we've had a lot of feedback from provider compliance that providers and county boards are getting citations because SSAs have been moving the outcomes to active and then meeting with the providers and saying that they should go ahead and start working on these outcomes because they're active. But the plans, the budget for the plan has not been agreed upon and the plans have not been signed off on. The providers don't have a signed plan. So we're going to recommend that you go through the phases of planning and the service summary, and then at the very end, go back and move the outcomes to active, just to guard against what provider compliance is seeing within these compliance areas for the provider and the county board right now. So the, um, the phase that you're going to stop in and outcome is draft distributed and go to planning. Okay. So we're going to stop there and see what questions you have for outcomes. I see one question from uh, John about uh, are the S are the SSA and the supervisor the only ones who can view the notes and notifications? If you have the notification on your uh, dashboard. Uh, you can open it up. Uh, it doesn't. It isn't reliant on role. It's reliant on recipient. Whoever it's aimed to has it. Unfortunately, imagine you can't have three or four recipients, so you can't send it to multiple people at the same time. It gets back to like the old style: pass a note in class. You have to read it and then pass it on. And uh, so, to answer your question, uh, are they the only ones? No, but you would have to pass it on then. If you want somebody else to read it instead of marking it complete, you would change that recipient to who you want it to go to and then save and close it, and it would push it over to them for them to, to read or to look at. And then whoever's the last in the chain would mark it complete. Now, one disadvantage with this, I, I will say it is how the system is, not how it was designed how the system functions is it does not leave you a trail or a copy of it. So if you change the recipient and pass it on, you don't have a copy of it in your uh, notifications. The only time you will have a copy of it in your notifications is if you mark it complete. What about, huh? what about history? It will not be in, the, uh, in your history mm -hmm. because just like a paper note, it's passing the whole thing on. So, any other questions about uh, outcomes? We can pause here a second uh, and give you a chance. I got big fingers, so I know it takes a little bit to type sometimes. So. Tracy, am I going slower for you? Better? Is blue. So this is first time for me using this, and uh, also for Debbie. So uh, so we're still kind of learning. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I need to scroll to the bottom. Thank you. Okay. So now that we have the uh, outcomes in draft distributed. 
and we are ready to move over to ISP, the plan, from the individual's front page. So at this point, to recap, we've gotten feedback on discovery. Uh, we've finalized discovery and we've published it. Uh, and if need be, from the front page, we've printed out the full set of discovery results and sent that out. We've worked on outcomes and pushed those to draft distributed. And if need be, for the outcomes from the draft distributed, same thing applies. I don't want to forget that because I know a lot of them are still going out manually. I can run the SSRS report. Notice it got a little quicker this time because it's been used a couple times now. And do the same thing. And I can print those out one at a time and send those out if they, again, if they don't have portal access so that I can get feedback on them and get them over to the, uh, the right stage, not the active, but get them over to draft distributed and make sure everybody's bought into the plan. And then at that point, I'm ready to start working on my SP. Yeah. And one piece that I didn't talk about the service summary. We do um, in working draft. Okay. We're going to go. So within the ISP, when you're in working draft, one of the things you're going to see is approvals are needed. Um, so it's looking for does the plan need behavior support, human rights committee, and finance approval at this very first stage. So while you're working on getting behavior support and human rights committee approval if it's needed, then you want to go to the service summary approvals. So if you're going by the, the pages that were sent out and you're following along, you're going to flip over to the service summary um, page four and go through those pages. So, go through service summary? Yep, we're going to go through finance. Okay. Because you can't go any further and approval of the ISP or the phases of the ISP unless you have marked those that you have finance approval, behavior support, and human rights committee approval. So I, within the service summary, and, and let me back up so that uh, I don't want to go too fast, from the individual's front page, I went to service summary. I opened up my current service summary, which I have set up because to add projected services to an outcome, the service summary has to be set up and it will ask you for the finance manager's name, the budget support specialist's name, and the beginning and ending of the individual's budget plan. That's policy thing what uh, puts in there. I know what some of the counties are doing. Uh, it can be any dates. It cannot be more than 366 days. So from the start date to the end date could not be more than 366 days. The services that you added from the outcome will flow downstream and through the IT world and end up here. Now, many of you have talked about when you create them, it creates them back on the outcome as local. Uh, we can talk about that in a little bit. And we've got service tickets. It's really easy to fix. Uh, but staying with the phases right now, uh, the budget support specialists would open each one of these up. And if they're local, uh, they would do their costing analysis on it, including their fund allocation, number of units, and uh, all the items needed or their individual rates that's associated with it and save and close them. 
And once they've completed that, they have the ability to, I'm sorry? Stay here for just a minute. Okay. And before he moves that to the next phase, we also know that there's a, a few counties that are not yet ready to use the finance portion of the service summary. So we also wanted to go over, and I'll update the slide and send this out to you guys. There are minimum entries that have to be entered in this portion of the service summary in order to move the service summary through the phases. And service summaries have to go through the phases in order to get planning through the phases. So you cannot get a plan to agreement unless you've gone through service summary phases and planning phases. So within this working draft, you would at least have to assign a budget support specialist, a finance manager, and put in a start and end date, and choose a funding source if it's local in order to push it to pending approval. So those five things, so I'm going to say them one more time in case your county is not using this yet. So it's assign a budget support specialist, assign a finance manager, put in a start date, put in an end date, and choose a funding source if it's local. And as long as you do at least those five things, you can move it on to pending approval. Now, if your county is already doing the services with financial information, and you've entered everything, then you can go on to where Tony was getting ready to go. Okay. From here, once uh, once we've got all that done, waiver won't require anything, and it allows to. Uh, okay. I have something that is missing funding. I did that the wrong way, and I apologize. Uh, you have request funding approval right here. Uh, that will be in this drop-down, the more commands drop-down. And uh, I've got an error with this service summary. So uh, you super users, uh, when we get into uh, doing some analysis or, or troubleshooting in another separate class, uh, we'll look at this. and. I'll explain to you what the error is, but uh, from here you can uh, pending, push the uh, push the pending approval, and it will complete, and close, and update to, and it'll be gone because setting right there. Okay. That makes sense. Service summary is pretty simple, and there's, like uh, Debbie said, there's a lot of counties that are not using it. Uh, it's probably one of the more difficult to get through and understand and uh, take care of issues with. I know a lot of counties are having a lot of problems, so they're not doing it. But it is part of the plan, and it's part of your process, so I won't get into that. Uh, but I will show you uh, when we get over to the plan how you can uh, go ahead and get that approval if you need to, even if you're not using service summary so that you can keep your plan going. So uh, let's take a couple more questions here if there are any. And before we get too far, because this gets into a lot of questions, I know. 
uh, what pages that were sent out are you talking about? Uh, what pages were sent out? Uh, there's actually two groups that are sent out, discovery and I'm out. talking about these. So oh, okay. we okay. sent um, in a PD or in a, a PowerPoint presentation um, the phases that you have to go through, um, and there's four pages of it. Um, I emailed it out, and then Kelly Johnson also attached it to the last um, update that she sent out. So what pages? And that was from Tracy. Tracy, did that answer your question? And we have one from uh, Shelly before that uh, that I just saw. Please explain further waiting to activate an outcome. When you move it to active, do you do this on the date that the outcome is projected to start or when all the components of the plan are complete? You move it to active. You do this on the date the outcome is projected to start. We are recommending that you do it when all of the components of the plan are complete. So you have a signed ISP, and then you move the outcomes to active. So you're ready to hand it to the team and say, 15 days from now, please start these services. Okay. So to clarify, we cannot publish until this part is complete. And that's from uh, Shannon. If you're talking about the service summary, yes. Uh, but a lot of counties are not using the service summary, but, uh, and this is policy, so uh, I'm looking at Debbie when I'm saying this, uh, I understand that your plan has to have total costs on it when it's published. So with that in mind, that is why the service summary has to be complete or IE approved. And uh, that's a policy thing. I know how the system works, but uh, Debbie, you can talk about that piece. Right. So when, when we built the system, it was with the idea that a plan has to have a budget included. It's part of the SSA rule. So it, it had to go through the phases of discovery, outcomes, a budget that was part of that, and then um, the, the plan approved. So right now, while counties are still trying to learn the service summary portion, we wanted to show you both options. If you're utilizing the service summary portion, then you would go ahead and have the projected services, and then your budget support person would go in and have would input the units and the dollars and the rest of the information that goes in there, and then would move it on to the next phase. The, if you're not using the service summary portion, then we needed to show you that there's five minimum things that you have to put in there in order to move it on to the next phase. So it, you can't just skip the service summary phase altogether. You have to put those five minimum things in there. And then in order to meet the SSA rule, you have to show the person their budget from something else. So the CPT or something, you would still have to attach to their plan in some other way. Um, that is the flow chart. Tracy asked if that was the flow chart. Correct. I need to know if that was flow chart. Tracy, Debbie was referring to the flow chart uh, for the phases that uh, that was sent out. Yes, so uh, that is referring to the flow chart. As far as the whole process flow chart of everything in the system, uh, we're working on trying to build that. It's very complex because there's 
allowed us the options to to change things back or to update. So there's a lot of flowbacks in it, and and it's pretty complex. I don't know that we can get it out in one document, but uh, I know they are working on one upstairs. But LOC's got the priority right now. I've been working on it personally and sent one down. How do you figure out where you made a mistake when you get a business process error notice? I get them in the service summary section. And that's John, what county? Jonna. Jonna. I'm Perry. sorry. I've been pronouncing the name wrong. I'm Perry County. Uh, so, Jonna, let me answer that one first. From what county? Perry. From Perry County. Uh, I offer this up to everybody, and that was including you guys. I will come to Perry County and walk you through as many service summaries as I can in one day, and I guarantee you we will get them all the way to complete before I leave. Uh, you're getting a business process error for, for potentially several different reasons, and I saw your next question. Can we have a webinar dedicated to setting up and going through service summaries? Uh, Debbie is working on a training package for super users. I won't go into that uh, right now. That might be something for the end before we close this, but uh, uh, that's one of the big pieces we're looking at. Service summary uh, is really complex and getting a lot of people. So uh, keep that thought until the end, and uh, Debbie will probably touch on that quickly. Not too quickly, though, Tracy. Not too quickly. So, okay. So we've got our service summary and we've got it complete at this point. And we're going to uh, try and move on to the plan now at this point. So to recap, we've published Discovery because we got good feedback. Uh, we made our updates. We pushed it through. We published. We've got our outcomes and draft distributed, ready to go active, but not yet active. We've got our service summary that the finance manager has either approved or has the basic information uh, completed on it. And we are now ready to start work or get the ISP moving along the phases. When you open it up, like Debbie said initially, you're going to see approvals needed. Approvals refer to the first phase of, of the ISP, and it's referring to the things in here. Right here you see them. If back on the outcome you added that behavioral support or HRC support was needed, if those people are in the system, you can actually input their names right here, and they will show up needing to approve down here. They will get a notification that says you have an outcome that needs to be reviewed by you. And they can manually go look at that within the system and mark, you know, that they, this field becomes unlocked. And I can set one of those just so that we do it. Right there. And that once they have completed their review, which one was that, HRC? They also have the ability to go in, and I'm going to refresh my screen. So. Your check mark out too. But they would show show up. We're running into technical difficulty, which I really apologize for. They'll show up just like the finance manager does. This information for the finance manager flows from the service summary over here. Now, if you're doing the manual process like Debbie was talking about with the CPT or another 
cost projection tool or cost method other than within Imagine, you can open each one of these up and approval received, yes or no, update it, put the version of your CPP from MSS, uh, any comments, This is a policy thing. If I enter this data in here just to give you an example that you, you have that ability to. Uh, waiver costs based on out of MSS and CPP, that way you have a total cost on this printed plan. Uh, there's a field right here for it. And it can be input by the finance manager, by the SSA supervisor, SSA. If I try and update it, it'll give me an error. So it is those two people, the two people that should be inputting it to begin with. I can do a save and close. And now looking at this, I have all the approvals. Yeah, do you have to change those to no? I'm sorry? Do you have to change those to no? I'm going to first push it so that we can show approvals are needed. Even though I have an approval, and we've had some questions on, on this from, from some of the team out, out of the counties, because, uh, where'd it go? Right there. They, they get hit in this phase. So, uh, and this is kind of off from Debbie's, but I wanted to touch it, because it says pending approval, and, well, I got approvals. If this is done through the system, it automatically updates this field. If I try and go to the next level now, the, the button's not there. So since I did it manually, I also have to manually update that approvals are no longer needed because I went in and manually updated these. So if you're going to do the manual process of updating your approval tractors, you also have to manually update that approvals needed and then save it as such. And now guess what? I no longer need approvals, and that's clear right here, and I'm ready to go to the next phase. Okay. Yep. And it is now a draft distributed, ready for feedback from the team. Now, one thing with draft distributed is a lot of people say what well, kind of feedback on the ISP will draft distributed from the individual's front page. I can run the ISP and draft distributed. It will give me everything that is forwarded out, outcomes. Uh, it will not give me discovery. And I'm going to go ahead and run it so you can see it's going to have a note on here that discovery is separate. The reason discovery is separate is, is because it can be so big and the majority of the formatting errors we ran into was because it was on there. Uh, if we want to include emergency contacts on the report, the action plans on the report, and the essential health data on the report, we can expand each one of these sections, and it does make the, uh, the ISP a little bit longer. Again, do not use the print button. Use the save as Use Acrobat and do an open. And now you have a, a pretty nice looking document that your team can share and and use. And I know there's been some things, some questions about uh, running the report ISP and agreement phase. So uh, when we get there, uh, I'll discuss that, but uh, this is the draft distributed report. Because the draft distributed, the ISP is actually in draft distributed, and all the other components are in the right phase. If the components are not in the right phase, and components, I'm talking about discovery, talking about your service summary, talking about your outcomes, if those are not in the right phase, 
parts or all of those will be missing from this report, even if you try and run it from front page. So it's a matter of having everything staged at the right time, the right location. So, Debbie, anything to add to that? Yeah, the only other question that we've received is, you know, if we've sent the components out for feedback every time we've gone through, why do we have to send the plan out in draft distributed? And the um, answer we've heard most often is, the only thing they haven't seen is the, the budget aligned with all of the services. So they're looking at it one final time with, with the services and the budget and everything together before you send it out for signatures. So there shouldn't be that much conversation around it, but they may still have some questions about the dollars and cents and everything together. I see uh, Shelley had one other question uh, about going over the service summary process one more time. Uh, I'll recap that as soon as we get through the ISP. I can go back through that uh, and we have until 3 o'clock. We'll answer as many questions and go through as many times as need be to, uh, to try and get you familiar. And remember, you can always request additional assistance by contacting Debbie and Kathy and somebody can work with your county one-on-one, -on -one, set up a date and a time, and uh, uh, make sure that you understand the IS tool uh, as an expert. So we can do it there, do it here, in as many days as you need. So uh, we're going to move, move on a little bit further and hopefully not go too fast. So at this point, we have Draft discoveries, draft discovery has been published. Outcomes are in uh, draft distributed. Uh, they may still be getting feedback. They may not uh, and be updated. In draft distributed, you can continue to update those, and those updates will show on the portal side while it's in draft distributed. The service summary has been pushed uh, to approved. Any and all of your human uh, services and your behavioral supports have been received and your plan is then draft distributed. So we're ready for the next phase. Pending agreement. Many of the counties don't have their connections in the portal, uh, so they get inundated with uh, a lot of alerts and notifications. Uh, when it's, each one of these phases is changed for an item, if you have team members assigned that don't have portal access, the SSA will get their notification that they should be printing the item out and sending, sending it to them. So uh, the pending agreement phase uh, or agreement needed phase is Another step that will, at this point, what it looks at is agreements are needed, yes. How do I know that? Well, I'm going to go back here to the individual's front page and look at my context, my connections to this. According to how it is, guardians, providers, and individuals will agree. So if they are listed here in this part part of the page as a team member, a guardian, a provider, family members do not get a notification of agreement needed, but the individual, which they're hidden, but they're actually there. And I can actually get into this person from the portal side and show it if we would not want to. But they get a notice that the ISP is an outpending agreement and I know that because right here agreement tracker we have an area for the providers. All the providers from the front page their information flows over here and is displayed. I have a couple of them duplicate and my SSA super users 
uh, you're going to learn why those are duplicates. Uh, that's for another class another day. We have the individual who has to agree, and we have the guardian that has to agree. Each one of those people has got to agree to the ISP, and there's two, two ways. If they have portal access, they can log into the portal. Or if they need a hard copy, I click one time too many. Mm -hmm. so, from the individual front page, I ask to be in agreement phase. And what's the difference between this one going to be uh, and the other one? This one is going to have the signature page. Now, I can click uh, ISP agreement phase at any time, even when the discovery hasn't been pushed, even when uh, the ISP isn't in the right phase, and then the system, this uh, SQL service, SQL Server Reporting Service (SSRS) will do its best to make that report. And I just answered a support ticket. Uh, to someone because their ISP plan was in draft internal. The signature page didn't show up for them. And that was because their ISP was in draft internal, not in agreement needed. The plan has to be in agreement needed when you click this report for all the components to show up in the right place Pull off. I'm looking for my agreement page. And I think I've got an error in UIT. So, God bless IT. But this is the phase. Uh, I know it works in production. Uh, because I actually tested it there this morning. But once everything is staged in the right phase, it's the only time that ISP and agreement phase and the ISP being in the agreement phase, that the signature page will populate for that uh, report. And uh, so that kind of uh, goes to, if, if I go back to the ISP and I recycle it to draft internal, uh, it will not print that, that final page. So, uh, do you want me to show the portal for the individual what it looks like? Sure. Okay, we're going to jump kind of a little bit off track. I'm going to log out here as my... I don't get to see the portal very often. And you're going to actually see the portal if I can... It'll take me just a minute to get a log in.
This is an individual from the portal side. The individual we're working with, Shyla, and you'll notice that for her, the big button's lit up that says agreement to need it. Shyla's very proud of her hat. <laughs> she went to the Kentucky Derby two years ago. And from here, she has the ability to agree to the plan, or she can view it if she chooses to. She can add a few final comments, and I'm going to add them just so we can see what happens. The nice, wonderful thing is Shiloh also knows which one of her providers and guardians and have agreed to the plan also. So she has instant gratification and feedback that who's agreed and who hasn't. Now some of these providers, of course, may have the manual plan. That's where once you receive it back signed, you're going to have to take the step of updating the provider or the guardian. Let's update uh, the guardian here as the first example. And comments. date I received it back, uh, how I received it back, I got it in the mail, agreement was received, and it was a hard copy. Now it's, it's a, again a process thing as far as that signed hard copy. Uh, you do have the ability, and it's, it's a county and, and a process thing where you put it, but you do have the ability to scan and upload it into the ISP folder with the individual's file. Uh, I know that's a great place to keep it, that way it doesn't get lost or anything. And then once you've made your updates, save and close, and let's just check, check, check it. Like that. That quickly, on the other end, with your people that's using the portal, they have the ability to see that it was updated and how it was done. So, nice and quick, uh, and agreements are still needed. And again, when you start doing the manual updates of each of these instead of the portal, uh, it takes quite a bit more work, and somebody told me quite a few more clicks, and unfortunately, I I don't control that. Debbie, I, I'm going to finish agreeing to these if you want anything to add while I'm doing the final agreements. Yeah, so um, we are trying to work on a report for each county of where plans are in the phases. So hopefully we can help you kind of identify, you know, this person you thought was all the way through and you can't figure out why it's not showing up in the agreement phase and maybe one of the phases is out of whack. Um, so hopefully that will help. Um, and like Tony said, um, if you think that your county would benefit from 
you know, our coming and helping and just sitting down with the SSAs and going through plans in particular, then we can do that as well. Um, but we're hoping that you know, watching this and kind of going through will at least get them started. Um, you ready to move it on? Yeah. Okay. So let's finish this one, and then we'll go over some future trainings after we go back through the service summary. Okay. Uh, at this point, I've, what I've done is I've gone in manually and updated my other providers because they've mailed a signature page back to me. They're happy with what they see. I did want to touch real quickly. Uh, Shyla added some comments, not feedback, comments. And when I open her ISP record up, lo and behold, there they are, her comments and how she feels about her plan and is excited to get started on it. Uh, so it does not go unrecognized. It's very important that uh, the individual be uh, part of this and they know that everything they see is, is being uh, taken, taken very serious. So I've updated it manually. I also have to change agreements needed to know. If you use the portal, this portion happens automatically. So you will not have to update this. So not trying to push portal, just trying to make fewer clicks. So uh, once I've updated that, all agreements received, it's in pending. I can validate that here and Lo and behold, I'm ready for the next phase. It's now complete and ready to publish. Complete and ready to publish is just one more stage and anything to add to that? No, I think that's one of the phases we'll be looking at of what really happens on this phase. Um, or is it one that we can take out? I'm, I'm not really sure what happens here other than it's ready to publish. So once once that happens, uh, it may be a, a county process uh, that's involved. The next step is to publish. And in the videos, you'll notice that I, I point this out. Read this screen. An ISP report is generated as PDF that will go in the SharePoint folders off of the front page to Documents Folders and the ISP Archives. The PDF will be uploaded into the individual's document library. The SharePoint's off of the front page. An ISP history record will be created. ISP history uh, record is on the bottom of the ISP page. We're going to look at it once we publish this. The ISP is set back to working draft. Well, if you don't open the record, or you know that you published it, it really gets confusing because it's now set in a working draft. I thought I published it. Yes, you did. It's We recycle the system. I don't say we. The system recycles the information, and it resets everything so that if you make changes to it, it's ready to push back up to publish again mm -hmm. uh, instead of inputting a whole bunch more information over again. It resets it for you. So. We're going to tell it OK. Publish pending. This is going in the background. The SQL, uh, SQL Server Reporting Service is pulling all that information from all those IP uh, locations, pushing it over to Acrobat, creating a PDF in the background, labeling the PDF, and then pushing it over to the SharePoint server, which is on another computer, and publishing it in the right folder and putting it in the right location. So there's a lot going on. You kind of wonder, okay, well, what do I do? And open up and click it. Give it a couple minutes to work. Uh, we have published these as, with as many pages as 300 pages, and it, in 300 pages will take five to ten minutes at least to publish. So there it is. When you uh, click the little refresh button and it pops back to working draft, you know it is printed. And you can look at your report in one of two places. If you open this up, on the very bottom, ISP history, 
there's the report. I did notice out at one of the counties they had a problem because this wasn't showing up. So we had to go to the uh, document folder. And I don't have permissions with this user because this is a, quite honestly, a mangrove user that I have changed multiple counties with. Uh, that that's why this is popping up for you. If you have the uh, have the right setting, you're going to get uh, the report's going to pop up in the PDF here. Uh, for me, it doesn't, and that isn't an error with the system. I wanted to make sure it's right, but my users go through a lot of changes as. I'm using them to test with. So the other location that I was talking about is off of the front page. The documents. And it's going to take a while to pop up. Because it's looking at a bit another big computer server. Crossing my fingers, mm -hmm. make sure it's there. And right there it is. And I can open it up here uh, because this doesn't go through a whole bunch of things. So there's my published ISP with all the pieces. And my outcome, because I have signatures, is now funded, approved, feedback, and being worked on. Uh, we'll take some more questions and then we can go through some more items. Uh, let me see and make sure that business officer can we have Please review. Yes, I will. Why do the phases not match in each area? Can we have a crosswalk of the ISP should be in this phase when outcomes and service? Uh, that's a Debbie thing. Uh, I know she's got the four pages of the phases for each one. Uh, I don't know if we could put them all together and say switch to this and switch to that one. Uh, or not, whether you want to take something like that on, this question right here. Yeah, actually, Tracy, and I'll send this document out to you again because I'm not sure that you have it. it. It does go through that the discovery has to get to this phase and then go to outcomes and that you have to get it to this phase and then stop, go to planning, and then as you get to the second phase in planning, go to service summary. So um, it does go over that some, but I'll make sure that you have it. And See, but if you want enhancements on things, Debbie's very uh, responsive. I know she works with you guys all the time, uh, and she's got me helping on her team now. So. Uh, if she runs out of time or she's busy, she can throw it over in my lane and, and we'll try and get something together because uh, we want, want it to be as simple for uh, the team as possible to use. So, you know, but everything will come back through Debbie. Debbie is a central speaking voice for what goes on coming in and going out uh, through the office. Unless it's a support ticket and helping one issue, uh, you won't hear me talking about the processes and phases. That's Debbie. Yeah, and I think when, when we talk about why are the words not the same, so, you know, we go down through discovery and it gets to publish and then we get to outcomes and it gets to active. Those are some of the things that we also want to clean up. So when we have talked to counties and one of the things that, through the working and not working, one of the things we heard overwhelmingly was the words are very confusing. So we have it as one of the enhancements to clean up the words. 
we need them to be consistent. We need to know that um, if it's at this point, it's the you know the first step. It's the same first step for all of them. So we do have that listed as one of the enhancements. Any other questions? Please do ask, and then we'll uh, we'll go through the service summary again. Do you have to set anything up to go through the service summary again? Uh, I'll just uh, reset it to draft internal. Okay. No more questions? I definitely want to give everybody an opportunity to, to ask. Okay. Service summary. I'm going to do a little bit of reset work. So, uh, and most of you finance people out there that are using service summary, you'll know because service summary goes back and forth and back and forth so many times uh, trying to get it exactly right. Uh, you have the same ability that I do, which is this thing right here, called Run Workflow, and Reset Service Summary to Working Draft. Uh, you can use that if you've got your Service Summary completed, it's been approved, and you go, gee whiz, we got to make some more changes on it, uh, check mark it, add it. And it doesn't look like it updated, um, but when I pop out of it and I refresh, there it is. It's back in working draft. And I have the ability to, up, to open it up. And for the service summary, on outcomes, for you to add your providers, to an outcome, you have to formulate and have a projected service. And uh, for that that reason, I'm, I'm going to cover a few things beyond just a service summary. So you may see me bounce around. Uh, and I'm going to talk slow because we didn't have any other questions. So because service summary is very complex. And we're going to approach this like you're using, this is a county that's using the service summary. So the counties that are not using the service summary, you know, we had that list of things that you have to put in, but we're going to approach this as a county that is using the service summary. And we won't get the counties that are not using it. We'll, right. we'll hit that again at the end also. Right. So from the individual front page, because service, service summary, for one, impacts outcomes. It impacts outcomes because down here in my projected services when I start to start to cost out or add services to an outcome. For these providers to have access to this outcome and the portal they have to provide a service, even if it is a no-cost service. Uh, somewhere in the IT world, uh, it connects all the pieces together so that they can see it, they can act on it, and everything else. These start and end dates right here, some of the SSAs, when they try and put these in, it says no service summary. So the service summary has to have a certain end date before you can put a service on an outcome. So the service summary starting the end date and finance manager everything is probably one of the first pieces as far besides uh, assigned team members that you want to have in there so that when they come to doing an outcome and they try and add a service, 
that they don't get an error. Because if I didn't have a service summary with dates right now, and I put a start and end date for the service, Wording. Yeah. Debbie has to correct me. I'm sorry. I'm not projecting hours. Yeah, well, projecting hours. It, it, well, and it's important because I got to use the terms you guys understand. You shouldn't understand my language. I should use yours. So when I'm projecting hours within a span for this uh, service, if there's no service summary, it'll bounce. So. That's, that's why you, the service summary period has to be there to begin with. So, so that's that's why you got to do it. Uh, so, that being said, I set up the finance manager. I set up the budget support specialist, and these are the people that will get notice notifications. The finance manager, when it, uh, it's pending approval, this person gets the notification. When the SSA runs a workflow or notification, we call it a workflow, but it's really just sending the notification that cost, uh, costing is needed, projected hours and costing is needed. It fires, and it goes to this person. So once they get notification, they have the ability to come in here and work on this item. Now, somebody asked a question earlier, uh, and again, I'm kind of bouncing around because I'm covering a lot of things <laughs> beyond phases with this to help you understand that Back on outcome, when you initially create projected services, a lot of people have sent support tickets in that they come up local. And they, they tell me that the person has a waiver. Yes, they do. Go ahead and create the service as local. At this point, it has not been added to, CP, uh, to calls, to MSS, to any other system. When the budget support specialist comes in here, and starts looking at these services, and they go, well, this first service, it's actually a waiver service. This is a little secret for the budget support specialist. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. I shouldn't even call it that. I apologize. But where they change that from waiver to local is right here. This is midstream. So if this is actually a waiver service, the field is not locked, change it to waiver or change it to local, save it and close it. Yeah, when we were setting up the service listings, they had the default to one choice. So they defaulted to local because they didn't want to set it up so everybody had waiver services. So they defaulted to local. And then if somebody has a waiver, once you save it, you can go in and change it. Just changing it on the right tab. And a lot of people, right. uh, you know, didn't know that, uh, and it's, it's not your fault, you know. Uh, that uh, oh. SSA super or super users. Here's another one of the scenarios going to be set up for you. <laughs> You're getting to see some some items that you may not get otherwise. But in this area is where you'll have the ability to. Uh, to change those, and the budget support specialists can do that, and service listings. Set them up for the right type, whether they are local, whether they are waiver. And then when they go to the service summary, 
they'll show up just like they are supposed to. And again, if, if you have somebody that's on waiver and has no local services, and all these will be listed as waiver, there is no county fund source that you'll be adding to them. Only time county fund source, and I compare county fund allocation to a checkbook. You have to tell the finance manager what pot of money, what checkbook to pay for local services from. I don't know, it's a process thing, how many counties have two or three accounts that they manage for local services. And some of the larger counties probably have quite a few, and they pay for some services from one, some services from the other, and that's why this is set up so that there's a choice and not just one. So, and we won't get into setting up finance. That's something later. Uh, it's a little bit complex. It's fun to listen in, even if you're not a finance person. But uh, if if you are, it's something you definitely want to sit in on. So uh, after that, and after after it's been costed. And again, I got an error, so I'm not going to get the button, but I can go in and run the work. And we've, we've devised, and if you have any questions uh, on anything, you know, an email to Debbie, and, and she can send it up to me once she's taken a look at it. Uh, we'll do our very best uh, because what I was going to say or getting to is, is uh, we have some ways to get through the system, not workarounds. I, I, I see the word workarounds a lot, and the system works. Not workarounds, but alternative ways to do things that we build in so that you're not blocked. Because the last thing we want is somebody's plan setting for two or three weeks waiting on one person or waiting on something to occur when we have a method in place that we can continue that process and take care of these people. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. So, and I hope, uh, who asked the question about the service summary? Did that answer your question about uh, the service summary? Joanne. I think it was Joanne mm -hmm. or Donna. Let's uh, walk through the service summary and then walk through the service listing and then service summary. I'm struggling with the flow. And that's Perry County? Yeah. Donna, did that help? I'm going to be out of Perry County on April 13th also. I think you're having a buddy meeting. So uh, grab my arm, I'll stay, and uh, I'll walk you through as many times. I won't walk you through. I'll let you do it because I believe in letting you, you learn that way uh, to uh, to make sure that you're good with it. And I've got some open dates next week. If you want, uh, Perry County is not that far away. If you shoot an email up to Debbie and they're okay with it, I'll run out to Perry County one day next week. Uh, I believe I've got open. No, not next week. Week after, right? It'll be the week after, but if you shoot an email up to Debbie the week after next, I can be glad to come out and help you. So, uh, somebody, Debbie Albert? Yeah, I don't know how that happens. Uh, some counties add their county board for NMT, but it automatically defaults to Muskingum. Yes. Has this been fixed? No. Uh, there is a service ticket in for that. I know that does not fix your problem. Uh, it is a defect that the system automatically defaults to the first one based on that serve that combined service. Uh, you can change it and save it, but then as soon as you add, open it up, it defaults right back again. Uh, I'm as frustrated as you with it because I see it when I test, and uh, the team is focused on LOC right now, uh, and uh, that's all I. Debbie can go from there because she's the product owner. Yeah, I am sending um, a message right now to um, our development team to see when the um, date is scheduled to have that fixed. Um, 
So I, as soon as I get an answer, I will send that out to the Imagine Project lead. And who is asked for Debbie Albert? <laughs> yeah. So that Debbie makes sure that that person gets the information. You have an alternate ego. Yeah, somebody's trying Jonna, if, and another uh, method that uh, you may want to do, uh, I know a couple people out there have my phone number. I uh, actually, I forget her name that I work with. Oh, here, don't go. Um, Jonna, when we were at your working, not working, the SSA and your budget support specialist stayed after with Tony. So they have um, our information to um, call and ask follow-up questions. So we can schedule time to come out and go over that information to run through your service summary. Erin. Marcy chimed in. Erin. Okay. Uh, she has my phone number and my email. If you shoot me an email, we can organize a time, and I'll be glad to do a join me and do a one-on-one -on -one tutoring with you. Uh, it's my pleasure to help any of you and Karen. Uh, so, and I can do a one-on-one -on -one tutoring around a join.me meeting, and we can actually walk through it with your scenarios that are in your county with your people so that uh, it's not just training, but it's actually useful and uh, producing for you. So uh, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, I'll check my email before I leave. I also check it at night from home. And uh, I'll look at my calendar next week, and I know I can open up a couple hours. Uh, uh, we're in the office two days next week and three days in the county. So uh, I'd be glad to take one of those days, dedicate a couple hours, and make sure that we uh, uh, help you and uh, also teach you. So uh, go ahead and do that, and, and I will get respond back to you. So. Yeah, the... Um the other thing that we wanted to tell people around um, training is we're going to start scheduling super user training. Um, it's going to be scheduled twice a month. So we're um, at the point now where we're confirming dates and um, locations. But Tony had a really good idea of just starting at the beginning of Imagine and working our way through the system. So one week we will do the front page. The next week we'll do discovery and everything that goes along with that. The week after that we'll do outcomes. So we'll give everybody the scheduled dates and the agenda item. So if you think you pretty much know, the front page invitations, how to add addresses, all of those things, then maybe your group doesn't need to come. But if you're still struggling with invitations, how to put addresses in, um, and you know things like that, then um, medication administration, you know things like that, then you would come on that day. Um, so we will be getting all the way through. So there will be a day set aside for service summaries, um, the fiscal piece. So that in the morning, um, you know, I think it was Perry County where we talked about different ways of learning. Um, and they said, you know, if you could have one format or one plan that we're all, we're all going through together in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we all work on our stuff, and you kind of helped us through the blockers that we have. So we kind of like that format, um, and it's something that we may be able to utilize as we're doing these super user trainings. Um, so that's the, the thing that we're going to try to set up. We also want to take feedback from those sessions of more information about what's working and what's not so that we know as we're coming out of those what we're scheduling for enhancements, you know what's coming up, and then it's those groups 
that we're going to ask to be involved in the UAT as we turn around and start working on things. So um, I think, you know, the, the schedule for keeping people involved in ongoing training and not just this one pass through um, is going to be a much better result. And Aaron, uh, a lot of this goes back uh, to the uh, suggestion, like Debbie said, that uh, that you put in there about uh, it may be a morning session of training, but it will be an all-day session of learning right. where the afternoon is uh, all about you actually working and having on-ground support of actually getting your fingers dirty and touching that keyboard and Super, superintendents, it won't be a day loss of work. It will be prosperous work of them getting plans done and moving them forward and being able to come back to your county and provide assistance, targeted assistance, to all the SSAs and other SSA supervisors in your county. And uh, with a follow-up number and, and documentation and uh, hopefully a whole bunch of good resources around it. Yeah. And for you SSAs and SSA directors, you can case note it. Woohoo! <laughs> Any other questions? We've got about 10 minutes left, and I uh, want to make sure that we uh, give everyone the opportunity. This is saved. As soon as Kim tells us how to share it, I'm sure Debbie will send out the link so that uh, the people that didn't get to participate uh, have the opportunity to listen again and pick and choose pieces they want to listen to. There's always questions that come up afterwards as you begin to digest things. So uh, uh, if you shoot those to Debbie, uh, she'll try and answer them or uh, schedule them to be answered in a later webinar so that uh, we make sure that nobody is left confused and dazed. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody attending today then. And like Tony said, if you have any other questions, just get them to us and we'll get the responses out in a frequently asked questions or, or in a follow-up webinar. You should have received also the um, invitation to the next webinar, which is about contacts and circles of support, which will be on Thursday, April 2nd um, at 1 o'clock. So, so um, we will talk to you all again on April 2nd, and thank you for attending. <laughs>